Hello, my name is Keely Dannenberg. I'm Senior VP of Client Solutions here at Orange Grove Consulting. I am joined by Dr. Kelly Watson, co-managing partner at Orange Grove. And today we're talking about engagement, employee engagement, the three types of engagement, and we'll get into each one. In this video, we'll be talking about one in particular. So Kelly, tell me a little bit about what employee engagement is. Yeah, so employee engagement, really important concept because it's about how employees work and more importantly, how they feel while they're doing that work. So it's the enthusiasm and the level of involvement that employees have with their work environment. Great. And there are three subtypes. Is that correct? Yeah, there are three types of engagement. So the first is behavioral engagement, which is basically the intentions and actions that demonstrate that people care. The second is cognitive engagement, which is their knowledge and belief-based um, connection or a sense of purpose with the organization. And the third is their emotional engagement. So how passionate they feel about where they work and what's happening around them. Okay, terrific. So why don't we talk about behavioral engagement in this video today? Tell me a little bit about what you would see in an organization that had high behavioral engagement. Well, this is where you'd see it in their attendance, um, in their willingness to maybe step up and do extra things that aren't part of their job description, um, their level of productivity. I mean, you know when employees um, have behavioral engagement because they're doing the behaviors that you want from them as employees. Um, they also, uh, you know, are just going to step up and do that extra you know, this is these are the employees that feel good about coming in on a Saturday, for example, to do an inventory count are the folks that are behaviorally engaged. Excellent. And what would cause them to be behaviorally engaged in a high way versus a low way? Yeah, a big part of it is about your rewards and recognition. So when they do something good, like refer the company to friends and family, you know, that, that there's some kind of acknowledgement that that was good. Or when they worked on a weekend, it was acknowledged that that was something extra and not just a, a checkbox for them. So, um, you know, another, another way is if they, if you are able to remove barriers for them, take stuff out of their way so that they can get the job done without a whole bunch of headaches and um, problems, and then finally, if you have supportive benefits, so if they're not always worried about, you know, where are my kids? How quickly can I pick up my kids after work? Or, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I've only got a couple of days off and I've been sick longer than I thought it was going to be. And now I'm getting nickel and dimed around the edges. Like I have to, I'm being, you know, told that I need to come to work when I'm sick. It's sort of those um, little nickel and diming things that really eat away at your behavioral engagement. And who do you think would most affect this behavioral engagement for better or worse at the organization? Yeah, um, it's really HR and senior leadership. So these are the folks that set policies that can be supportive of behavioral engagement and um, are the ones responsible for connecting these rewards and recognition systems um, dropping by once in a while and saying, hey, I noticed that you came in early, you know, and and appreciating people for the extra that they put in. Um, those those are the folks that are responsible for it. So it's it's pretty much at the top for this type of stuff, because you want to make sure that overall, your organization has policies and practices that are appreciative and that are fostering this kind of behavior. All right. Terrific. Well, thank you so much. We are going to record another short video that you can find on YouTube um, about the other two types of engagement. Thank you, Kelly.